Hey guys, welcome back to another, yet another tutorial of uh, Astrophotography 101. Today I'm in my backyard. Uh, so this is a pretty cool backyard. Um, it's just 15 minutes away from my home. So you can see some mountains in the mountains. So um, I'm going up the hill right now. I don't know if you can see it. Still have a long way to go. 400 meters the, um, elevation. So hopefully um, you'll get to see something. Um, the moon is just about to set. So um, I'm hoping to catch the moonlight and the moonset. And hopefully after that, I'm hoping to catch, of course, the Milky Way, winter, winter Milky Way, and of course, Orion. Um, today, the topic of our tutorial is how to shoot in light polluted areas, because it's been a request uh, from a lot of you who live in uh, light polluted areas, suburban areas. And it's been a problem um, ever since urban uh, expansion. So. We're gonna see how to reduce the uh, light pollution, the effect of light pollution on your pictures, how to maximize the contrasts without bringing up so much noise. And uh, yeah, so that's, hopefully it's gonna be a nice night and uh, I'll see you on top. I'm uh, halfway through about that. You can see I'm sweating. Um, yeah, I've climbed 200 meters with 30 kilos on my back. Oh, whew, this is some uh, this is some sport for sure, some uh, exercise, so it's pretty cool. Um, have a beautiful, beautiful sunset behind me. Uh, I don't know if you can see anything, but uh, it's really gorgeous with the moon right there, uh, no one on the ski track, so it's perfect, perfect weather. Low clouds right there, like a sea of clouds. Um, uh, the Milky Way will be appearing right like this, and Orion is just behind these trees, uh, so it's gonna rise there, but uh, yeah, so 200 meters away. All right guys, so uh, I've made it here to the top. Uh, behind me, you can see the Alps with the Mont Blanc, uh, which is Europe's highest mountain. Um, so this is a beautiful, beautiful vista. Actually, one of the most beautiful in Europe where you can see all the Alps uh, from the French side and a little bit on the, uh, this side, the, uh, the Swiss side, uh, and behind, of course, the Italian side, uh, which we don't really see here, but um, yeah, so it's pretty chilly, it's windy, it's actually minus, uh, I don't know, between minus two and minus five degrees Celsius. Um, so it's pretty chilly, but it's all right. I've <laughs> been in uh, worse conditions. So the point of tonight is to actually show you that you can actually get uh, great shots uh, under um, high light pollution. Under me or under us in the valley, you have Geneva, which is a huge city uh, with a lot of light pollution, a lot of sodium vapor uh, lamps, street lamps, street lights, that, um, that's producing a lot of light coming up. Fortunately for us today, we have a sea of clouds, as, as you can see behind me, that is kind of blocking the light. Uh, the Milky Way is gonna be in, on the other side, but on the other hand, uh, Orion is gonna rise right there. Uh, so you can see uh, the Pleiades and of course, um, the Hyades right now so I'm waiting for the moon to uh, to set over there so there's still a little time and 
I am recording the um, the moon setting with the little resort restaurant thing and the Milky Way which is there uh, I have a, a, a wide angle so uh, and I also have the ramp So I'm just going to show you the strategies to um, maximize the contrast out of the night sky and of course to minimize uh, the effect of light pollution. The moon is just about to set right there and uh, I'm about to start shooting uh, some photos to show you how to reduce light pollution or at least optimize your pictures in a very light polluted zone. So among the things that you can have, um, you can invest in a little tracker like this one. This is the Vixen Polari. The tracker allows you, it, so it tracks the sky, the area of the sky you're shooting. So it allows you to expose for longer. So to actually reduce your ISO. So this is pretty convenient when you're shooting in light polluted areas because the light is going to give you noise uh, most of the time, especially if there's haze. So what you want to do is reduce the ISO uh, just a little bit and then expose longer uh, using this portable tracker. Another thing that you can use is a light pollution filter. This one is a square one, so it actually fits the, um, the lens. Uh, there are several sizes. Uh, it's the uh, Lonely Spec Pure Night Filter, and, uh, 85 millimeters, and uh, it goes on top of your lens. And it, what it does is actually reduces, uh, doesn't suppress completely, but it reduces considerably the uh, um, the light coming from street lamps because it blocks for uh, the sodium emission in the spectrum. So you get more contrast in the night sky, and uh, that helps you a lot. Alright guys, so when you're shooting in a light polluted area, I would advise you not to um, shoot directly into the zone that is uh, that has uh, light. You might want to choose a location that is uh, not direct, where your subject, for example the Milky Way or whatever you're shooting in the sky, is not directly under the source of, source of light, otherwise you will have difficulties um, with this halo of light. Well, about the settings, I would advise you to not to put your ISO too high, so that's why I'm using a tracker, um, because you're going to get so much noise from that light pollution uh, from the halo, especially if there's haze as well. So um, open up maximum or just a little bit less as usual to get more sharpness, ISO just a bit less, exposure time, if you don't have a tracker, then the maximum that the 500 rule allows, otherwise you can uh, open up some more with the tracker, that way you will get less noise. So I'm taking a series of shots and uh, we'll see what's happening afterwards. Uh, I'm gonna take some shots with no light pollution, some shots with light pollution, and then we'll see afterwards in post-process how we can uh, avoid uh, light pollution. I'm in Lightroom and I'm about to edit a picture, a single picture, not tracked, that I took with the Canon uh, 60 and the um, Sigma 14mm lens uh, f1.4 art. So as you can see, there is the moon is still up, 
so that's fading out the uh, the rest of the sky. Uh, fortunately for us, in this area of the sky, there is no um, deep sky object. But as you can see here, this is directly uh, Geneva under the clouds. And you can see this huge halo over here. Uh, actually, if I bump up the exposure, you can see right there, it's completely blown. Here are some tips to um, reduce this, the effect of this halo. And the first thing you need to do is, uh, what you can do is to reduce the highlights, generally speaking, not too much because otherwise it won't, you know, if you do it too much, it won't look natural. And then what I would do is I would locally adjust you want to reduce the light so what you can do is just uh, give it a little bit more contrast maybe the exposure uh, just a notch down maybe the highlights just notch down um, I would not touch these guys clarity it might help for the sky afterwards but we won't touch it and dehaze you can use dehaze, that helps. Usually don't do it a lot because dehazing will get you some blue color that you, of course you can adjust afterwards. But uh, okay, let's see what, uh, what it does. So you can see it reduces the light. You can use a, uh, actually you can use the, I use the feather at the maximum. So it, you know, it, uh, it takes in uh, a lot more. Okay, that's not too bad. It's, still see some light here and I can uh, erase just a bit so that uh, the sky is not affected too much so it doesn't so it still looks natural um, I usually tend to desaturate because you can see if you apply some darkness and contrast of course is going to saturate more the colors so I would desaturate that way uh, the yellows actually start disappearing and actually about the color, what you can do is you can, uh, in the color reduction, since sodium uh, is actually emits in the uh, red, or in the reds and the oranges, I would decrease the uh, orange saturation and the yellow saturation just a bit so that it turns into grayish. If you think that the uh, when you decrease the, the light here, you might have some um, color noise, so just increase the color noise and the smoothness. So those, you know, those uh, little streaks or bands disappear. Right after that, it's just the it's just um, a matter of uh, balancing so that it doesn't look too bright in the sky, whereas it's too dark here. That doesn't look natural at all. So see, this is before and this is after, so you can get something pretty decent. Um, you can try and tweak your way towards getting more uh, definition in the sky. For example, if you have a Milky Way shot, but uh, you have to know that uh, there isn't much that you can do with the technology today if you don't have a light pollution filter to really reduce light pollution in post-process. So you can try and do that as well in the sky as much as possible, local adjustments. But um, I would advise not using that too much either. Right, so to wrap up our little tutorial, I wanted to show you two finished pictures that I took on the same night. Um, on the left here, you can see the, uh, uh, so I'm here, there is this huge uh, area where it's just like uh, village after village and uh, small cities and even big cities, Lyon in France, that's uh, producing a lot of light and you can actually see the, the haze and uh, the huge halo and all the valleys there's all just uh, cities there but uh, so this is this photo is a panorama of uh, one two three and then one two three one two three one two three so four rows of three pictures that are tracked and uh, 40 seconds using a 50 millimeter lens Sigma and of course using a light pollution filter. So the tracking gives me so much detail when I zoom in. You can see uh, a lot of nebulae, the uh, SIDR region, the, uh, 
the Swan, uh, the North American Nebula, Pelican Nebula, uh, and all of the Milky Way, even the Andromeda Galaxy, uh, lots, a lot of the stars. Uh, so when I zoom out, I get this gorgeous view and these uh, details. And the second picture I wanted to show you was uh, back at the ski tracks. Uh, so this is me right here, and this is a shot at 135 millimeters using a Samyang, so 135 millimeters f2. And um, so this is a blended panorama. I um, took a picture of the foreground with me and I took a picture of the background at the same time and of course in the same direction. And uh, I stacked these uh, pictures, actu actually about 15 pictures uh, of uh, 40 seconds. And you can see there is still haze coming from Geneva. This is right uh, underneath this. But uh, the fact that it's stacked using a light pollution filter you can get some great, great, great shots and great detail in the uh, Rosette Nebula and uh, the Christmas tree cluster right here. So those two quick examples to show you that this is really possible to take such pictures uh, even though it's really uh, light polluted. You wouldn't be able to take that these shots right within the city. You have to sort of get away from the cities. but. Uh, these types of shots are definitely possible in the suburbs if you kind of if you try to get away uh, as much as possible actually I'm just gonna give you a little tip on uh, finding dark areas and uh, to see if your zone your area is in a light polluted area you just google light pollution map and uh, so you go to this website I will uh, put the link in the description below uh, so you can see that uh, depending on where you are, of course, you have a lot of um, light pollution. So here in Paris, it's in white. And then in the suburbs, it gets uh, colder and colder. And uh, just to show you my area, so this is Geneva. Right there. So this is what we saw. I was on top of these mountains, which is in the uh, yellow-green and the area is you know in white and red fortunately for me the the clouds were sort of blocking the light but you can see i was still in this yellow uh even orange area i was actually right there in the uh col de la fossi right here so if i compare it to for example london to get the same kind of shot that i took you would have to travel to the countryside and get in the um, yellow areas um, shooting of course not towards the city so for example you wouldn't want the Milky Way to be just above London if you're for example right there but shooting out to sea uh, for example that's a good idea all right guys I hope you enjoyed really much this tutorial about optimizing your astrophotos in light polluted areas if you have other tips of your own please let me know don't hesitate to like and ask your questions in the comment section below and of course share and subscribe for more tutorials. I was really thrilled to shoot this video in such a beautiful place but it somehow reminded me that we really need to do something about light pollution as urban expansion gains on dark lands by the day. There are still dark reserves that we can enjoy but it is possible to do something about light pollution and give the chance to our future generations to enjoy the beauty of the night sky. In the meantime, take care. Bye bye.